everybody. I'm Angie, the CEO of Stay Safe East. It's lovely to be here and to see so many of you campaigning for this vital issue. It is absolutely vital that we send a reminder to our new government that ensuring a sufficient supply of appropriate accessible homes is a human rights issue. It is also a safety issue because there are not enough accessible properties to meet the needs of the disabled community. When the home is no longer a safe place due to abuse, harassment or crime, there is often no place for the victim to go. Victims are trapped, unable to escape from the torture of hate crime or abuse. This is not hyperbole, but fact. Refuges are not usually an option. Sometimes Roots to Support, which is the national database for domestic abuse refuge vacancies, shows zero vacancies for disabled people and especially wheelchair users on any given day. Disabled victims are labelled as complex and struggle to find accommodation within specialist services that are bound by commissioners rigid deadlines in relation to length of stay or the amount of support that services can offer with very stretched staff teams. Temporary accommodation is a huge issue. A recent report from Women's Aid showed that disabled people most commonly end up in temporary accommodation when they flee domestic abuse. But this headline masks the fact that most accommodation is unsuitable for the person's needs. Victims might be trapped in a room without a lift. They might be unable to access appropriate washing facilities or stuck many miles from appropriate healthcare support. I made the argument to the previous government that for many disabled people, safe accommodation as defined by the Domestic Abuse Act, is almost mythical. It is far more likely that the true choice is being unsafe or barely safe. And that's just not good enough. We are asking that all new homes are built to the M42 standard and 10% of new homes are built to the M43 standards. <laughs> then there is a very real potential for creating a network of safe accommodation provision for disabled people to leave their homes when they are threatened with violence and abuse. Suddenly, the use of home swap schemes like the Pan London Housing Reciprocal would be an option. Local authorities could utilise appropriate properties for temporary accommodation provision. Victims of crime and abuse could move between rented properties to escape. We know that this new government has committed to ensuring new homes are built. We also know that the government has committed to halving the rates of domestic abuse within 10 years. We are asking you now to join up the dots. Please make disabled people visible in your planning. We want accessible housing now. Woo!